Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something we spent quite a bit of time talking about on this series. So if you're a regular subscriber, you're probably familiar with class design. So let's go ahead and pick up some class design, but I want to go ahead and show you a little example to motivate this. So what I've got here, courtesy of opengl-tutorial.org, thank you for them for making this beautiful tutorial and posting it online, is what's called a particle system here. So again, this might be familiar for folks following the graphics or any of the gaming playlists that we have on this channel. But the basic idea is I have a bunch of individual particles here that I am rendering and they're part of a particle system. So my little challenge here for you is to go ahead and think about how would we design this? What would our abstractions be? So I'm going to go ahead and open up a notepad and if you've gone ahead and paused here, go ahead and try to do this exercise and think about how you might abstract this. And if you've thought about this, here's the common thing that I see folks do, and it might be fine, but again, it's the intent of your API that you're designing. So the first thing that I would probably do here, and I see many folks do, is just create a individual struct for a particle. And we might have things like the X, Y, and the Z positions, maybe the speed of the particles, maybe the lifetime. And I'm sure you can think of many other properties like color and so on that you might have for each particle. And then what often I see folks do is then create another class here and they'll call this particles or maybe particle system, just so we're more explicit. And the idea will be we want to do some sort of simulation here. And we want to have some number of particles, so maybe a container here. So I'm going to use a standard vector of our particle here. Okay, now this in itself isn't a bad design, it's fine, but if your goal is to encapsulate or to communicate with a client, somebody using your API, your code that you've designed that, well, particles really just belong in a particle system, then we can actually nest our classes or these structures inside of each other. So what I'm saying is we can just take this class here and build it in here as a nested class. And this at the least will communicate that, well, this really belongs or we're trying to limit the scope and use some of our C++ tools such that it will be just part of this particle system. Now, is this wrong or a terrible idea? Well, it depends again on what your intent is with your code base. But again, for today, I just want to use this as a driving example to demonstrate that you can create nested classes in C++. And sometimes it's a useful tool to either hide stuff if you want to combine this with other idioms we've learned, like the uh, pimple idiom here, pointer to implementation, where I could actually hide this behind an implementation as well. So keep those in mind. This will just be another tool for you to use. All right, with that said, I think we get the idea. So let's go ahead and hop into some code and see how we would do this. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and create my struct here for a particle. And let's go ahead and just create um, an X here. And I'll initialize these to uh, zero here, and maybe we want a Y and a Z. And let's just go ahead and add some other attributes, some speed here, and maybe a uh, lifetime. And of course, you know, add whatever other attributes that you want for your particle. So we sort of get the idea that we have this structure here. Now, again, what folks are often tempted to do in this is fine if that's your design, but again, you could create the other struct here for the particle system but we're going to nest these today. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a, and this time I'm gonna use a class here and create particle system. And I'll go ahead down here, make sure I put my semicolon. And now we can see that this is within the class scope of particle system. So again, it's sort of identifying some relationship here between these two classes, but they're nested. So I can't really use particle outside of particle system. And in fact, since classes are private by default, this is in effect hidden or unavailable to uh, currently be constructing a particle. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish off the rest of our example here. I'll create a private member variable here which is just going to be a container of particles. So let's just go ahead and call this M underscore for a member variable particles. And then maybe we want to do some sort of simulation here. I'm just going to call it simulation, which will effectively call each of these particles will have some sort of move function that would, you know, do the particle business, move particles. 
Okay, so you can play around with what that actual implementation would look like. And in our simulation, you know, choose your tool of a range-based for loop. I'm just going to demonstrate uh, a simple loop here. Let's go ahead and use size t, i equals zero, i less than the particle's size, plus plus i, and then do something like call on m particles. For each one, you could use brackets here, or dot at if you want bounds checking. Let's just go ahead and use i. Just go ahead and call the move function. Okay, so this should do the trick here. Now let's go ahead and create one of our particle systems just to see if this is working. I'm just going to call it p here, and let's go ahead and compile this. And you'll notice that I'm using C++11 here. Let's even just back up all the way to 98 here, compile this. And um, I guess I'm going to get a few errors from what I have here for the initialization here, and it's going to be warning me about C++11. But my point in doing that, if I go ahead and scroll up through these errors, you're going to notice that, well, this idea of nesting classes, this is an old feature in C++. Okay, so this is something that we've been able to do for a while. Let me just move it up to 11 just to, again, convince you that this is something that's always been around. Just maybe you've never seen it before. So I wanted to show you today in this lesson. All right, so we can compile there in 11, 98, etc. Let's use 20 because I like doing more modern stuff here. And then, of course, now we can actually call p uh, run our simulation and pretty much finish our program here. Now, uh, oh, I need to uh, be a little bit careful here. Let me go ahead and make sure that this is uh, public here so we can actually call our member function. Okay, um, oh, and let me make sure I do it in C++20, and we can see that we can compile and run here. Okay, so you can see the simulation here uh, that is running here. Now let me just go ahead and make this so it fits on the screen just so you can see everything, again, that we've just embedded this struct within this class here. Now, it doesn't mean that it's impossible to use, however. So I should go ahead and again say that um, if I want to create an individual particle, I'd have to go through particle system, and then I could create through particle uh, another particle here. So individual particle. Okay, um, and I am allowed to do that so long as I again make this public. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. We should see at least one error here. And again, it's going to warn us that, hey, you know, we found this actual structure that's nested in the particle system as uh, demonstrated here, right? So within the class scope of particle, we particle system, we find particle, uh, but it is private here. So again, we're sort of indicating that, hey, maybe this shouldn't be used outside of particle system unless we really know what we're doing. And by making it private, we also have a little bit of protection here. So that'll be up to you. If you do want this code to compile, again, you just need to make this public. And then you can compile your code and instantiate or create particles through the particle system. So again, you could use this as a tool to sort of, um, in effect, uh, hide different data structures. I might use something like this to logically group things or again, just have particles. Um, if they're really truly meant to be only part of a particle system, but they're an interesting or useful abstraction to have, that's where I would use this tool here. Now, what are our folks at OpenGL-Tutorial do? Did they end up creating you know, two separate classes or what did they end up doing? Well, they kept things pretty simple. If we go ahead and scroll up uh, towards the top here, you'll see that they just end up creating one uh, class for a particle and then just a container. Okay, so that might be a fine design. Uh, data structures in OpenGL tend to look uh, C-like and try to remain flat for performance reasons. But again, depending on what you're trying to solve here, this isn't a bad strategy and it's not a bad tool to know about this idea of being able to nest classes in C++. So with that said, folks, I hope this was a useful lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something else about class design and where you might try to use this type of tool now that it's available and has for a long time been available in C++. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have comments or questions below, feel free to uh, enter the comment section and leave something useful. Put in a request for other video ideas on class design or things that you'd like to see. And as always, thank you for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.